coming. Thank you, Father Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, of course, again, now we continue to go. We go. Teachings that we've been <coughs> past last years. Yes, <coughs> teachings of the Dokshin and the following the teachings of the accorded great master and the yogi and the master the Shapa Thoru Rando and as well as the others too. We've kind of put together, I try to put together my little clarifications okay that we can easily a little bit understand it more more to all of us. So we that's what we've been doing and this is a one of the, again beautiful moment in our life. Truly I believe and we are having together <coughs> making and um, arrangement you made all different arrangement and uh, and come to here and uh, practice uh, is really wonderful. We all have the, you you have particularly you all have the busy lives and the too many things to put different ways and organize is really a lot of things and making that beautiful effort and your commitment to come to this and the participate the practices and uh, also kind of discovering or a little bit of activating, understanding, reminding of all the teachings that you received from the many great masters in a way, a little bit more addition, clarification, or at least the remind, reminding of the, all the teachings, and which is so wonderful, so beautiful. And uh, as Buddha told, you know, all the great masters said, so this is one of the beautiful moments, and therefore, again, always in the teaching, said, whether you're st starting the teaching, whether you contemplate in the teaching, whether you're meditating in the practice in the teaching, <coughs> always it is so important to correct our beautiful motivation. Generally, we, we all have the good motivation, beautiful motivation. That's what we are here together. And that motivation is the joy and appreciation in both each other. And devotions. Though, but however, due to the, our all this, this emotion and the negative forces or the habit patterns, and sometimes it blurs away all those things and then just kind of like continually carrying the mundane conceptions and thought. Thought and we really kind of very attached with, with our what's called this uh, habit patterns. So therefore, always in the teaching, say the correct the motivation. In every teaching, and when we receive the teaching from the great master, the living masters, when they give teaching, they said, and also in the teaching when we read the books, they also said, correct the motivations. That's it, so important. In general, the Buddha teaching is not externally something we have to do too many things. The correct amount of mind is so important. That's what, what Buddha said. Discipline your own mind or subjugate only your mind. This is my teaching. That's what the teaching said. It's to discover or kind of subduing, looking to the mind is so important. For that reason, in the beginning, the joy in the appreciation and the bodhicitta and understanding of the nature of the all the purity qualities. And we bring up those old qualities. This is not just a kind of like we're doing something extra beside our practices. It, this is really practices. And this is the one called the accumulated merit. To merit. What's the merit? Then accumulation merit. Joy and appreciation in the bodhicitta. And also the purity, discovering the purity, and understanding all those are accumulation merit. Merit is so important to actualize the realizations. So therefore, again, bring more joy, more appreciation. Appreciation is that we have those beautiful opportunities. We are beautiful beings. We have 18 endowments. Plus, we have more and more. A ten luxurious qualities, really we have. And above that, we have all the perfect conditions, conditions to do practices that even those great masters in ancient times did not have what we have now. All the facilities and supporters, the kind of convenience, that everything. And many teachings are often mentioned, we read the books and all that, many great masters, they are meditating practice on the caves and the mountains. It looks like very kind of appealing, nice. Things. But reality, there is no running waters, no heated rooms or the caves, and there is no really any kind of all the facility, just a sit, sitting in the caves and meditating practice. Yet, for their, their joy and appreciation, courage and commitment, they never complain. They never thought it was bad. They are so happy and excited and joy, really singing the songs of the joy and appreciation and the devotions. That's the one. We have more than that. 
everything is organized, everything is arranged, that every temperature, everything is kind of like according to our desires. We have all this, really, it's like a kind of almost pure land, they would say, when you think of that. We should, really, this is very luxurious, very special. So, for that, well, midst of this luxurious quality, and then put, have some really kind of prepared courage and commitment, use this our time as to practice it, and to activate it is so, so special, important. Practice is means you know, we are discovering the, the luxuries of the mind. Why? That will we take. We will have that luxuries, we will make ourselves happy and peaceful, joy, but when we leave this world, we will take that with us. This luxurious quality, anything that you, we developed with our mind, we are not going to leave behind. Behind. We go with that. This is called the inner luxuries. Inner luxuries, really. External luxuries, whatever we have, whatever we use, it is beautiful, with all the good purpose, all that, but we leave behind. And that also becomes the legacy and the visions and also a beneficial for all the beings. But something we developed with our mind, our nature with that, developed and discover our innate nature mind, we go with that. That inner treasure is so special. So practice and meditation is discovering our treasures. And this, so therefore again, as we bring more joy and appreciation with that. And then, always in the teaching said, is true in the Bodhicitta. And great master Kamalakshara is his meditation, there's three stages of meditation that he gave. And the second stage is, is already translated. His Holiness Dalai Lama is really gave that teaching so many times, he translated. Maybe if you read that book, it's really very good. But if you didn't read, read that book, it's so beautiful. And the second the meditation, Gorman Parpa in the Tibetans. And there, he, he, I mean, that is just Buddha teaching. Buddha teaching. He's the Buddha he requested by the King Tosun Dev team. And uh, so Kamal Shala came and requested by the King Tosun Dev team and all the students. He wrote three famous teachings, so particularly collected to the meditation. And those are so the four big first meditation instruction second meditation instruction, and third meditation instruction. Those are, I'm roughly translated, but it's a really good translated, you know, I'm sure he's translated very perfectly because it, His only Dalai Lama gave that teaching many times, so it's all. And there, <coughs> he said, the enlightenment is not coming without any cause and conditions. Enlightenment have to have cause and conditions. That cause also has to line up with exactly enlightenment, not just any cause, any conditions. So what is the cause and the condition of enlightenment? And that is, he said in the great master, gracious teacher, Buddha said in the teaching, that enlightenment, the root of enlightenment is compassion. And the cause of enlightenment is the bodhicitta. The conditions of the enlightenment is a skillful means of the six paramata practices. Then, if we put together that, we really get enlightenment. Become, because we have the perfect cause and the perfect conditions, conditions, and then get the enlightenment. So that's what the great master is said that. Is. So therefore, the compassion, root of compassion, is in, root of enlightenment is the compassion. So root of the bodhicitta is the compassion. And what in the teachings say that? Bodhicitta, of course, we talk a lot in the teaching mentioned so many times, but if we put down, bring down to the book what is Bodhicitta, it's a compassion. Compassion for all living beings, without any discriminations, without any partialities. That genuine compassion arising from the heart. Heart, that is the very, very cause of the enlightenment, that is the very cause of Dzogchi realizations. Dzogchi realization, Dzogchi realization is the enlightenment. Realization that we need to accumulate the merit and we build up that, that realization. So compassion is really in the teaching so many times is so special, I mean so powerful. Also why is it so special? Because compassion is 
the very nature of our own mind. Nature of our own mind. The Buddha nature. Buddha Tathagata Garbha, we heard so many times. What is Tathagata Garbha? Enlightenment nature. That, at that is a compassion. That is a wisdom. United compassion, wisdom, together is the Tathagata Garbha. That is inherent qualities to all the living beings. Whatever we go through, different things, different karmas in our lives, but that quality is never lost. Yet. Never go away. It's here. We came with that, with, we stay with that, and we leave this world with that nature. For that reason, gracious teacher Buddha Shakyamuni said, and I've said many times, and our great teacher Keji Pandeshino Ramaji also Bhopin said that. When the Buddha came to this world, gave the teaching, that quality never improved, nothing improved. And Buddha that did not come to this world and did not give any teaching, that did not disqualify anything. Nature remains as, as, as it is. But that remaining as it is is not enough for us. We have to dispel, discover, we have to explore. Why we need to explore? Because of due to the duality, due to the habit weapon that we piled up and covered that as a thick cloth, thick cloth, life after life, life after life. Our love, our compassion, our wisdom is very limited. Why? Covered up by the habit patterns, dualities. Otherwise, our love and compassion and wisdom is totally vastness, vast, vast and spacious as, as sky. For that reason, the great master Nagarjuna said, when you break that, I mean, he used the example, you, many of you know, you know, he, he put the example in the lamb, the uh, pot that has lamb inside. So you don't see the lamb light from the pot. You see only the pot. But if you make a hole to that pot, you see the light. You see, if you put, put two holes, you see, you, we will see two lights. If we put three holes, we will see three lights. And then he said, if you break that light port, the was, V-A-S-E, was, that light completely expelled throughout the space or beyond space, as great teacher Buddha Shakyamuni and Guru Pema Sama. That light is a compassion. That light is, is wisdom. That is what the, that light is. We will practice toga meditation, Zoki toga meditation. That light, that is what we are exploring, that's discovering. That nature, realization on the, the visions of the toga is not just created by conception externally. It's arising quality of nature. Deep is hiding behind the dualities. In the teaching often mentioned, youthful ways, bodies. What is a youthful? Youthful, that means it's never getting old or dead or anything. Always remain fresh, young, energetic, and brilliant. That is Buddha nature. That is primordial version, that which is inside it. And then that youth is where? Is vast, again. Similar as the Nagarjuna used the example was, V-A-S-E, was. But when you break that through the techniques of the Dzoki meditations, then we discover that the that youthful freshness of the old enlightened colonists. So therefore, I mean, again, this, the Bodhicitta, back to the, again to the Bodhicitta, is always in the teaching set that whatever you do, whether we are sitting, whether we are walking, whether we are sleeping, and we have the compassion and bodhi that are thought in our heart and mind, the all in the what the gracious teacher Buddha Shikam said, all the Buddha's teachings are came to your palms. Everything is not far in the distance. Everything really comes. After all, we look for So this the bodhi and the compassion, the essence of the compassion is. The essence of the bodhicitta is compassion, and the bodhicitta is more activated than compassion. 
And what in the teaching said, by the compassion, you're all projecting all the beings. We are we going to target that compassion to all the beings of the six realms. They all have troubles. Or as long as we have the emotion, karma, as long as we have, have the, the, the karma, that long we have the trouble and difficulties. Troubles, all the beings. So compassion is projecting all, all the beings to a six levels. And our wisdom is projecting to get enlightenment, make it more wise. So in order to fulfill the, the wishes of the Bodhijata, we need more wisdom. So, compassion. So therefore, Bodhijata is a union of the compassion and the wisdom together, which is known as, as Bodhijata. And uh, what the Honor sometimes teaching said, the cause, the projecting to the, by compassion, all the beings, which is a like, cause to get enlightenment, and then through the wisdom you project it to the result of the, of the enlightenment. I'm going to get enlightenment, I get achievement, that fulfillment, and then I'm going to help it to all the beings. Not just so only the waiting for the until I reach the enlightenment, but as that from now according our capabilities, helping and supporting to, to the beings with the genuine compare thought. Thought, that is really known as a body. So I mean, even what we do, practice meditation, whatever we do, if we have always a body that thought, then I asked a gracious teacher, Buddha said, all the teachings that came into your palms, not far anything, you go, you're keeping, holding up so perfectly all the teachings. Those are the te teachings. And then with that understanding, and then in the Loki teaching, teaching, Loki